guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is the first part of lesson 12.1. We're getting an introduction to limits. We've got two objectives. We're gonna use the definition of a limit to estimate limits, and we're going to determine whether limits of functions exist. So here's our definition for what a limit is. We're gonna be dealing with functions, and it says if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a unique number, which we're gonna call L, as x approaches some number c, from either side, so left and right side, then we would say the limit of f of x as x approaches this c number is whatever that l number is. And it might be confusing right now, but like is the case with most of our definitions, I think it'll make a little bit more sense once we start to take a look at some examples. So in this example, we've got the function f of x equals 3x minus two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the limit of our function as our x value approaches two. And we're going to approach two from both the left and the right side. I'm gonna start on the left hand side. So we're gonna start with a number that's smaller than two and gradually get closer and closer. So maybe we decide to start with 1.9 as an x value. So what I'm gonna do with that 1.9 is just plug it into my function for x. And when we do that, we get about 3.7 as our answer. Now I wanna keep moving closer and closer to two. So I'm gonna take this 1.9 and make it 1.99, because now we're getting closer to two. If we replace our x in our function with this 1.99, we get about 3.97. And then I wanna get even closer to two, so maybe we go to 1.999. Well, if we replace that in our function for x, then we get about 3.997. So that's as we approach two from the left-hand side. Now, if we approach two from the right-hand side, so maybe we start at like 2.1. Well, if we plug 2.1 into our function for x, we end up getting about 4.3. But now we wanna move closer to two. So maybe we go 2.01. Well, if we plug 2.01 in for x, we're gonna get about 4.03. And then I wanna move even closer to two, so maybe we go 2.001. If we plug that in for our x value, we get 4.003. So we're approaching two from both the left and the right hand side. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what number are we getting really, really close to. Well, as we build from the left hand side, it looks like we're getting really close to four. As we build from the right hand side, also looks like we're getting really close to four. So since we're approaching four, we can estimate the limit of three X minus two as X approaches two is about four. So we've got another limit we're gonna take a look at. We're gonna do the limit of x over the square root of x plus one minus one, and we're gonna look at that as x approaches zero. So again, we're gonna approach from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. If we're starting on the left-hand side, maybe we decide to start at negative 0 0.01. Okay, that's smaller than zero. Well, if we plug that in for our x value, we end up getting 1.995, and then we wanna move closer to zero, so maybe we plug in negative 0 0.001. Well, if we do that, we get 1.9995. And then moving even closer to zero, we could plug in negative 0 0.0001. Well, when we replace our x with that, we get 1.99995. So that's as we approach zero from the left-hand side. Now, if we start approaching zero from the right-hand side, so if we start at 0.01, Plugging that in for our x value, we get 2.005. Moving closer to zero using 0 0.001. If we replace our x in our function, we get 2.0005. And moving even closer to zero, we could plug in 0 0.0001. And when we do that, we should get 2.0005. So looking as we approach zero from the left and as we approach zero from the right, it looks like our function values or our y values are getting really, really close to two. So the limit of this function as x approaches zero looks like it's two. One thing I want you to pay attention to in this example, we actually can't plug zero into this function. If we did that, we'd get an undefined value, but that doesn't affect whether this limit exists or not. We can still figure out what this limit is even if we can't actually plug this number in for x. 
The same thing is happening in this example. We're looking at this limit as x approaches 1. We can't actually plug 1 in for x because then we'd get 0 on the bottom of the fraction. But we can figure out what our limit is. We can figure out what value we're getting really, really close to. So we're going to approach 1 from the left side and from the right side. And we're going to see what happens. So maybe we decide to start at 0.9. Well, if we plug in 0.9 for our x value, we should get 1.81. And then we're going to move closer to 1, so we'll go 0.99. Plugging that one in, we get about 1.98. And if we move even closer to 1, 0.999, we end up getting 1.998. Now let's start approaching 1 from the other side. So let's go with 1.1. Well, if we plug 1.1 in for our x value, we get 2.21. Moving closer to 1, so 1.01. .01. If we plug that in for our x value, we get 2.02. .02. And moving a little bit closer to 1, so 1.001. .001. If we plug that in for our x, we get 2.002. .002. So as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, it looks like this function value is approaching 2. So even though we couldn't plug 1 in, we can still figure out its limit as x approaches 1. There are a few times when limits aren't going to exist, so if any of these three things are happening, we would say that the limit does not exist. So if our function f of x approaches a different number from the right side of c than it does as it approaches from the left side of c, that's going to tell us that our limit does not exist. Number two says if our function increases or decreases without bound, so up to positive infinity or down to negative infinity as x approaches c or if our function f of x oscillates or bounces back and forth between two values as x approaches c. So we're going to take a look at this limit as x approaches 0, and we're going to show that this limit does not exist. So let's start on the left-hand side of 0, so maybe negative 0.1. Well, if we plug in negative 0.1 for our x value, we're going to get back negative 1 as our answer. And now let's move closer to 0, so maybe negative 0.01. Plugging that in for our x value up here, we're still going to get negative 1 as our answer. And maybe we plug in negative 0 0.001. Well, if we plug that one in for x, we're still going to get negative 1 as our answer. Now, if we work from the right-hand side, so maybe we go 0.1 first. If we plug that in for our x value right here, we're going to get back 1 as the answer. Moving closer to 0, so 0 0.01. If we plug that in for our x value, we're going to get back 1 as the answer and a little bit closer to 0, so 0 0.001, we're still going to get 1 as the answer. So as we approach 0 from the left-hand side, we got negative 1. As we approach 0 from the right-hand side, we got positive 1. We're approaching two different numbers here, so this limit does not exist. Taking a look at this next one, we've got a limit as x is approaching 0. So again, we're going to approach 0 from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side and show that this limit does not exist. So if we start on the left-hand side at negative 0.1, well, if we plug that in for our x value, we're going to get 100 as our answer. Then let's move closer to 0, so negative 0.01. If we plug that in for our x value, we're going to get 10,000 as our answer. And if we move a little bit closer to 0, so negative 0 0.001, we're going to get 1 million as our answer. So these numbers are getting very, very big. If we approach 0 from the right-hand side, so 0.1, well, plugging that in, we're going to get 100 as our answer. Moving a little bit closer to 0, so 0 0.01, we're going to get back 10,000 as our answer. And a little bit closer to 0, so 0 0.001. We're going to get back 1 million as our answer again. So as we approach 0 from the left-hand side, our numbers are getting very, very big, so much so that they're approaching infinity. Same thing is happening on the right-hand side. These numbers are getting bigger and bigger, so we would say that they're approaching infinity. Since these function values are growing unbounded, they're not going to stop. They're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger as they move out towards infinity. We would also say that this limit does not exist. This next example we're going to look at on our calculator. So we've got the sine of 1 over x, and we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0. So I've already got my function typed into the y equals screen, sine of 1 over x. One thing I will mention, my calculator is in radian mode, and that's going to be important as we try to graph this out. So if we hit our graph button, here's the picture we get. Now we're looking at as we approach 0 
from the left and from the right side. So as we work our way in from the left side, we can see that our graph is bouncing up and down between positive one and negative one. Same thing is happening as we approach zero from the right hand side. Our graph is bouncing between one and negative one. So we would say that our graph is oscillating between negative one and one. Since our graph has this oscillating look, it's going back and forth between two values, the limit does not exist. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.